But I think everybody else is marvelous, and I think that Whoopi's amazing, and everyone did a good job. But it's, I thought that the, there were other better films that were of that genre. Like, I thought the, um, you know, The Learning Tree was amazing, and Sounder. I'm just a bigger fan mm -hmm. of different black experience films. I thought that Color Purple was shallow, and I thought they were too wealthy, and I thought it just skimmed the issue. But right. I'm being really naughty, telling the truth. Um, but that's how I. Quest for Fire. When 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 he when he drops it in the water, I went when, when they dropped the fire in, in the water, I went berserk. <laughs> I mean, I just went crazy. I mean, when did you see that? Do you guys see that coming? And like, did you like want to go like beat up the scriptwriter? <laughs> well, well, actually, this movie was so hard to work on. That the water that you were standing in, that water, it was in a place called Bruce Peninsula in Ontario. Do you guys know where that is? It sounds cold. It's the Badlands of Ontario. In the um, in the beginning, so March, it was the uh, oh, February, the end of February. So just there's still snow on the ground. So we're in the Bruce Peninsula. And by the way, I thought leeches. I thought you would hope some creatures take a rest for winter. Leeches are big time. It's like we were standing in leech-filled water. So all those, that when he drops that, let me tell you, it was such a nightmare and nasty bit of business that thank God I had that greasy paint on because those little things, those suckers were trying to get me and they couldn't get purchased. But all of the guys were just like, Rrr. so everything you see, you see actors like there's a jerky, desperate thing. They're getting leached up. They have to sit and you'd see them. It was just a harsh. And then Jean-Jacques, the director, he would have us sitting in that water, all the leech-filled water, and he'd be shooting above our heads, but he wouldn't tell. And I'm, I'd done a bunch of movies, I'd done a bunch, so I'm pretty savvy with lenses, and I'd look up, and it was like, he's a fucking asshole. Because he'd be shooting long lens to something else, but have all the actors in the water. And it would turn out, the reason why I would do that is because he didn't want to have to wait for to get all the one, you know, once an actor's off, they tend to go get tea, put their outfits back, you know, whatever. He didn't want to disrupt us, so he'd have us in leech water, not even on camera, so. It was just desperate. And so when he dropped the fire, who cared about that? But we hated everybody. I mean, we, this movie was rugged. This movie was, was, a, was bloodletting. It was harsh. Wow. See, this, this is when you know making movies isn't fun, really. It's kind of this crazy. The only thing I can say, though, having complained just now about that, is that the movie came out. So, it's my best movie. But, ugh, if, if, if you were to tell me without seeing the movie what I would have to go through, there's no way. There's no way you're gonna be naked, you're gonna be abused by this pompous French guy, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna have leeches on you, ticks on you, you're gonna get speared in the foot by a thorn that's gonna go through your foot, oh. you're gonna be, you're gonna be, um, you're gonna have black mamba snakes jumping at you out of the ground as you run over them, you're gonna have puff adders, you're gonna have uh, cobras after you, you're gonna have black naked guys. We used to have these, uh, um, what do they call, rangers, waiting behind bullet, boulders, and I'd be doing the scene, and they'd be naked with guns, and I'd be like, ah! <laughs> and they wouldn't tell us, you know, so I'd be like, hee, 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 and they'd be like, holy fuck, and they'd be like, ah! <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, we're not, that's Mabumba from some tribe that he's helping us. And it was like, thanks for telling it. It was a harsh movie. And they wouldn't tell us when we were going to be done. It was like, you've got to come back for another three weeks of this. Woo! I put that on DVD. Is yeah. it their commentary? Because that would yes. be interesting. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a scram. Because we were like, oh my god. And Ron Perlman, you know Ron Perlman, yeah. right? He's so funny. He saved us. He saves us because when you see all the, all the shots where we're running, he's talking. He's going, taxi. <laughs> <laughs> taxi. <laughs> so we're like, uh, laughing because you're freaking dying. And these little pretty little bushy, bushy things that are like soft looking. They're called Heather, and the devil make her. <laughs> and John Jacques is like, you call us my darlings? Okay, my darlings, which is, it's like Hitler. <laughs> say, okay, my darlings, into the oven. He'd say, okay, my darlings, you just go, no shoes, nothing, okay. So I just want you to go from zip boulder to zip boulder. Okay, let's go. And we're like, <gasps> and you have to not have that pain thing. So it was awful. And one time he fell, he fell into this like swamp, 
the director? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he fell into the swamp up to his waist, and it was ice. So it was an ice mud swamp in the bottom. No one picked him up. No one. I'm not exaggerating. We all walked by. And no one said a word. The whole crew and the cast. And, we, and he, had, he used to wear this um, scarf, a cravat. Uh -huh. And he's like, hello. And we're like, this looked away. It was awesome. He like called out. It was money all day. We're like, that's pretty fair. Yes. As soon as I like working with Daryl Hannah. You mean a plan of the cape era? I, I'm not in the, this is using Equestrian Fire is a different yeah. movie. But I know Daryl Hannah and I like her very much, but I haven't worked with her yet. But you're so cute. I know it's a mixed up. I know. Yeah. Those like caveman movies. I think Quest, <laughs> I think Quest for Fire is a little bit better. You should it's a lot better. better. Unless, unless Daryl Hannah's a saber tooth, there's no way she's in our movie. And you know what? She would have quit. Anybody, anybody with any knowledge or any star power would not have quit. Is that it? Yes. Um, getting back to Quest for Fire, one of the things is there is such a build-up for this movie. You have this great variety, you've got a great source, and it's being come to this, everyone's talking about, oh, you're not going to use English language, you're going to try to use this authentic language. And then... Desmond Jones. Right, Desmond and then Jones. when it comes out, some of the critics just don't get it. Yeah. Was there like like the shock when you saw this? Were you like, come on, people, it was a good movie. Well, it made... At the time of its release, its first release, it did make $75 million worldwide, but it was it domestically at that time, which is 1982, it did pretty good. It did medium to, it did better than they thought. It's since made a ton more money and since grown, but you're right, it had a lot of a, ba a lot of a back backlash because there's no English, mm -hmm. no speak spoken word that anyone yeah. could grab onto. That was the main criticism, I recall. Yeah, because people were like, I'm not going to go see a movie where they don't talk. Yeah. Right. And then you get sucked in, and then before you know it, you've had two hours of you know, speaking yeah. English. So there was that. But you know what? We, people caught up. And we didn't get any back end. We didn't get paid anything. So you know, there was a part of it. For us actors, like, whatever. But it turned out that the fact that there was that, um, like for instance, the color purple, the NCAAP, what are they called? The, N the National Association of Advanced Art Color People. Yeah. And I never know how to say it. They banned and boycotted color purple, which I didn't know until I went on Oprah last week. They banned us because they felt that the movie was anti-male, right? Because yeah. of the, yeah, the father, because of Mr. Which, sure. by the way, yeah, yeah. it's like, you guys, it's the National Association of Advancement of Color People will help out, help a color person out in a movie, right? Mm -hmm. But they actually banned that movie, and it did impinge, and it, it made that movie less popular. It be, since became more popular. So it does hurt films, but you can't please them all, and you should never make movies to please people. But that's just what I know. And, you know, it's, let's face it. Salieri Mozart, not that I'm saying a movie mm -hmm. is Mozart, but Salieri is popular. I don't know, I have, a feel, I have a theory about Spielberg. I think that when, t decades from now, I think we will remember Oliver Stone and maybe Marty Scorsese, but I don't know that Spielberg will be considered the, you know, the guy that he is considered today, because if you really strip down, there's only a few of his films that are fantastic. Um, like in that big way, but because he's made so much damn money, mm -hmm. the current dudes in town now, the, the, the group love him. Yeah. But when you look at the essence of someone's work, the, the, the kernels of their work, you look at, I mean, is it transcendent? And I'm not sure it will be. That's just an argument I have to tell. So who is your favorite character? I worked with or what I, what, who I'd like to work with. As a person, as a you as a person, as an actress who's worked with a director, but as a viewer, as one of us, <laughs> who would you say is your favorite director? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a favorite director. I'm just trying to, just let me just like distill it here, because I want to just, um, I'm really in love with, say, early Scorsese, like Casino. I mean, I like, obviously, Goodfellas. I like the stuff of, when Scorsese doesn't work with Spielberg, I really love his work. When he started to do the Spielberg projects, like Fear, Fear, Kate Fear, I'm not so crazy about But I do, I would love to work with Marty. I'm not his aesthetic, I'm not his type, so that would be. And like, for instance, Woody Allen, who I, I'm sort of sad he screws his daughter and then he's with his daughter. But, <laughs> but I really love Vicky Christina Barcelona, and I love the way he works, and I know I'm not his aesthetic either. Yeah. So, you know, like, I like Woody Allen, but he's good Woody Allen. Like, there's a good Woody Allen. Like, I love Broadway, Danny Rose, and I like talky, talky, funny. 
Um, so he would be too, but there's like you gotta catch them, you know. I think Bertolucci's an amazing director. I think Francis Ford Coppola's incredible, and I love the girl, his child. I think Sofia Coppola's really good. Not the new one somewhere, but her. I thought Lost is good. So I have that kind of thing. women, women, women. I think um, I think Catherine Bigelow did a really good job on her at Locker, and she's kind of not nice. But I really like her, and she's not a fan of mine, but I really like her work, and I think that she's really worked hard to, to, to get to where she's at, and she's been just dumped on. She's been in director jail for about a decade or so, so it's nice to see that she won the Oscar. And I mean, James, you know, the thing is, the better the director, the, shitty, the shittier the person. Like, James Cameron's a dink, but he's a great director. I'd love to work with him. Spielberg, he's not a dink, but he's, he's, his movies are not as good, but, for instance, the other one that's not very nice, who's really good. Oh, David Fincher. I would die to work with David Fincher, but he's really, really hard to work with. But then again, it depends on the person that you're working with. So I didn't answer your question. I don't have one favorite, but those would be my favorite ideas. I mean, I'd love to work with Fincher, and I'd love to work with the director who just did the, I think he's the one that did the American, who did the uh, girl with the dragon tattoo. There's some Euro directors that I would love to work with. Yeah. Oh, and Pedro Almodovar. I mean, how can you not want to work with him? Because he loves women. You want to work with somebody who's not afraid of our color. And I'm not crazy about Tyler Perry. I think that, um, I think he sucks. But I respect him for all the money he's made. And I don't know what's going to happen with him. I don't know if they're going to open up and let other good, talented film it. Because, for instance, I think that Spike Lee's a genius director, but he's just a dick. But, I, but, you know, that's the drag, right? This is the thing. Talent never goes into personality. You can't get them both. Like, we need to, come on, universe. We want somebody who's sort of juicy, delicious, and is talented, you know? But it's not a popularity contest. Fincher, what's he done? Fincher did Seven. He's doing the new Dragon Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. He did that uh, Fight Club. And he also did a really good movie. What's another David Fincher film? Um, he's super good. He's, he's probably the best white guy director. He's the best American. Yeah. Do you have any good stories about Spike Lee? Oh, just that I had a fist fight with him. Yeah, that one. I had a fist fight with Spike Lee at the board show. For real? For real. I punched him out. And you know who broke us up? Sam Lucas Jr. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and Denzel Washington. <laughs> and Sam was so thrilled with cancer that he got between us like this, because he's little. And he had his eye bulging. And, <laughs> and he's like, come on, you guys. You know, I can't do a Sammy movie. He's like, come on, you guys, don't fight. Make love, make love. I'm like, hey, mom, I want to fucking kill him. And Spike was like, yeah, come on, come on. And he's little, too. And I was like, oh. Because he had said something. This is an 85 or 86. You see, it did impact my career, because I never worked with Spike. Lee. But yeah. Sammy was so cute and so cancer. And I kind of felt bad, because I was squeezing it. I was like, getting, like, here's Sammy, and I'm fighting Spike. What was said to um, you know, Spike Lee, uh, he put down Soul Man, you can see it, put it down, it was a little bit of a that kind of hurt from people saying it's not, it's anti-black and blah, blah, blah. And then he said, Rita Chong's not, and not in the sisterhood because I didn't date black guys. So he said all these things, and it impacted my career tremendously. So I see the scrawny motherfucker, and on top of that, <laughs> he gets this award, sorry, my not so potty. He gets this award, and they said, Mr. Trump, because I had won it earlier, he said, Mr. Trump, would you get this award to Spike? I'm like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on stage, and there he is, he's scrawny, he's that guy in class, he's like a terrier who, who kind of, so there he is, he's a bully, and I have that award, and he comes up, and I take it, and jam it into his gut, and everyone's like, is there a little vibration? I'm like, boosh! And he goes, oh! And then I pull him backstage, and they're singing We Are the World, <laughs> all the black elite, and I have him, and I attack him, and so everyone's saying, We Are the World, and I'm like, boom, 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 and I take him to a corner wall, and I'm like, fuck you, look, and he's going, yeah, 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 and then Sammy shows up and goes, don't fight. And then Denzel comes, because he's bigger, and I did a saying say elsewhere with him. Denzel, who was, you know, such a brown nose, but a good actor. He pulls me off, Spike, and now I'm like those cartoons trying to get him. And Denzel's like, you know, come down, I'm like, fuck you. Bro. Anyway, I got my lips in. That was my Spike. <laughs> I'm very adult. So. <laughs> no, there's no footage of that. Wouldn't that be killer? <laughs> do, you, do you like James Cameron as a director? I do. I would love to work with him. And you know, he's not easy. He's really not easy. But 
the thing I've noticed with the, with the auteurs, there's another director we're missing too that I would like to remember, but there's a, you know, if Sam Peck, Peckinpah had been alive, I would die to work with him because he had a certain, like, outlawness. And I love, I like Bob Redford. I would love to work with him. I love Tarantino. And I like Tarantino. I don't think I'm as aesthetic because I, I, I think I'm not black enough. He likes the Sister Sisters with more. But um, I love his, because he, he directs like music is done. There's a certain, so does actually, so does Scorsese, which is why I'm attracted to the directors who understand that the laws of music, rhythm, pacing, who can, because I actually sometimes like to listen to films, not just look at them, I like to listen to them. So, yeah, yeah. And also if you notice, guys, directors who cook well, are good chefs, are really good directors. I don't know what that is, there's a correlation between a good sauce and a good scene. <laughs> yes? You brought up uh, Soul Man and Actually, it's one of my favorite films simply because of James Earl Jones. And yeah, that last was, speech. That's I, dark, Darth Vader. Yeah, I know, but that was such a great speech that he gave. I was wondering how you felt about working with him and having the I, I've done a couple movies with him. I just saw one. I did this really goofy film called City Limits with James. And it's a fun movie. I mean, it was on that, you know that Masterpiece Science Theater 3000 mm -hmm. with the little puppets? Yeah. I know. I have a, a movie that they did. So, and I've never seen it. And it's so great because they, they heckle your movie. Yeah, movie it, uh, it's called Mystery uh, City Limits. You can, you can go online and see it. It's genius. It's so fun. Not the movie, but the, 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 the puppet. He's in this movie with me, and that was our second film. And I have to say, I'm mad for him. He has great stories about being one of the first successful black actors in town and on Broadway. Because um, I know that when he did the original production of Othello, there was a big brouhaha because he was having, yeah, I think he was even screwing the girl in real life who played Des, Desmodona. Desdemona. 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 Yeah, she, she was this famous actress that he was in. In real life. Yes, and in real life they were doing it, and then on stage they were doing it, and that was during the. Um, just at civil rights was still uh, was happening, so he was just like, why? So 